The first thing we need to do is either create a wallet or connect one of our own wallets to the platform. So depending on if you're using the browser or the smartphone app, it's gonna be a slightly different process, which I'll go through now. So I'm gonna use the browser first. You can see I've got the cloud wallet connected right here. Cloud wallet is something that you can set up with Bybit. They actually hold the keys of the wallet. So it's a custodial wallet, meaning Bybit hold the keys and so they ultimately have custody of the wallet. However, they can't carry out transactions on your behalf. So it's you uh, carrying out the transactions. They just keep the keys. Now the benefit of this is that you can use it cross-platform. So if you're on your computer or your phone, you're just using Bybit's cloud wallet. They have the keys and you can use everything. You don't need external wallets to link with it and you don't have a seed phrase. Of course, if you want to keep your own keys and you want self-custody, this is not the wallet for you, right? So you can't export this wallet anywhere else. It's Bybit wallet within the Bybit platform. You can't use the same wallet and the same assets, um, you know, a different platform like Metamask or Rabi. So I think this is good to set up and this is easily linked with your Bybit account if you have one. So that's kind of the, uh, the Bybit cloud wallet. Have one anywhere, you can set up multiple wallets in here. If you're using a browser, you can also uh, download the Bybit wallet extension. So think of MetaMask or Rabi for this. So it downloads an extension to Chrome and it will give you a seed phrase and you can use it much like um, those other wallets that you just connect. And that's a seed phrase wallet, so you have self-custody there, it's a hot wallet. If you already have a wallet like MetaMask on your browser or Rabi that you wanna set up, just go to third-party wallet and connect it here. You can connect the wallet that it sees. It sees my Rabi here, but if you have MetaMask, it will see that as well, you can connect it. That's obviously your own wallet that you're just connecting to the Bybit platform. The wallet connect here, if you have a trust wallet on your phone or something like that, you can just scan the QR code and connect your wallet. So that's how you connect wallets on the browser application. Now we'll get to the smartphone app. If you're using the smartphone application, we have one extra option, which is to set up an MPC wallet. Bybit call this a keyless wallet. So I'll show you how to do this. Go to the Web3 platform, go to wallets in the bottom right. You should see the options to set all of these up. If you don't, up at the top, these are the wallets in the drop down here. So I'm gonna click that. You can see custodial wallet, like I said, which is Bybit owns the keys and we have keyless wallet. Keyless wallet is a normal wallet, but instead of giving you the seed phrase to keep safe, what happens is the seed phrase is encrypted and then split up into thirds. Bybit hold one of the thirds and so you have to link this with your Bybit account with your login. They have one of the thirds. You have one of the thirds on your device and then the last third is kept in your cloud account as a recovery. Now this is supposed to make the seed phrase a little bit easier to keep. So instead of giving you the seed phrase and you having to write down 12 words and try and keep that safe, what happens is these, the 12 words are encrypted and kept in uh, three shares. So Bybit has one, you have one on your phone, you have one in the cloud. Only two thirds of the shares are required to do something with the wallet. So when you sign transactions, Bybit take their share, you take the share on your phone, that can sign transactions for you. And of course, if you lose your device and you can't log back in, you can just get a new device, log into your accounts, and then you have the one third in your cloud, Bybit still have their third, you can put that together to recreate the wallet. This is supposed to give you a little bit easier uh, recovery options, and you don't have to keep the seed phrase. That's why it's called keyless, because you're not seeing any of the seed phrase, it's just kept digitally. So this one is a great option as well. Bybit Custodial Wallet is linked automatically to your Bybit account. You can very easily get um, assets in and out. Keyless Wallet is a great option if you actually want self-custody of your assets uh, and to have them with the shares like that. So it's up to you which one that you have. You can actually use all of these in the same application as well. Now, if you have your own wallet already, like MetaMask as a hot wallet and you just wanna load it into here, you can do that as well. So go out, you can see Seed Phrase Wallet. I'm gonna click that. This is just your seed phrase. So if you have one already, you wanna load it in here, set a device password, which is like a spending password, put your 12 word phrase in, and it's gonna reload that wallet right in Bybit Web 3 Wallets can be complex, especially if you're a beginner. So I'll leave some extra videos below explaining them and the pros and cons in more detail. If you just want a brief overview, you can pause the video here as well and see the different types of wallets and which one is gonna be best for you. Now we need to deposit some assets into our wallets in order to go ahead and use them on the blockchain. Because we're using blockchain wallets, every single transaction that we carry out on a blockchain requires a gas fee. And so we need some of the gas coin in our wallet in order to pay for those gas fees. So for the cloud wallet, this is automatically linked to your Bybit account. So I'm gonna press receive. And then from here, I want to receive uh, ETH. So I'm gonna search for ETH like this. 
And I'm gonna use the Arbitrum network because it's a layer two on top of Ethereum, which means it's way cheaper to use. So I'm going to receive ETH and you can see Arbitrum, this little logo here, that tells me it's the Arbitrum network asset. This is the Ethereum mainnet, this is Optimism and so on. So you can choose the uh, blockchain that you want. So if we go over to something like base, we'll search for base here like this, you can see this is ETH on the base network, right? So you can just choose whichever uh, blockchain that you want to use and get assets on, you can click that. So I'm just going to search for Arbitrum like this. This is it. So I'm going to click this one and that's my deposit address for Arbitrum one. And this is ETH that I'm sending. So if you have assets elsewhere in another wallet or another exchange, this is your wallet address that you send to. But if you're using a cloud wallet, this is automatically linked to your Bybit account. So I'm going to press transfer from Bybit account. The uh, wallet address is auto populated because it's literally linked. And then the chain is Arbitrum and I'm going to send in, you know, any amount here, whatever you want. So you can press confirm there and that sends from your Bybit centralized exchange account over to your Bybit cloud wallet. If you're using any of the other types of wallets or you're just not using Bybit to send assets, you're going to have to copy your address and then go to the other platform and paste it in. So what we can do is go to receive again and I'm just going to search for the exact same asset. So ETH on the Arbitrum chain, this is my address. I'm just going to copy the address here. Then I'm going to go over to my Binance account. I'm just going through with a simple withdrawal. So I'm going to withdraw ETH. I'm going to paste in the address right here. And then it's going to say, which network do you want to use? Well, I want ETH on the Arbitrum network. So I'm going to choose Arbitrum. That's it. You can just send out an amount of ETH there. It's going to go to the exact same place. Uh, it's just a simple withdrawal from your centralized exchange account over to your wallet because you own that wallet. You have the address. And so you can get any asset in there. If you want some uh, deposit bonuses on Binance and Bybit, if you haven't got those exchanges yet, look below in the description. If you're new on those, you can get deposit and trading bonuses. Now I'll show you how to swap assets in Bybit Web3. There's two different ways to do this. If we go to trade, we've got swap and we've got Dex Pro. So I'll show you simple swap first. So we'll go over to this and then it says swap and bridge. So what you can do if the uh, platform allows you is to actually bridge assets from one chain to another. So if you've got assets on Arbitrum and you want to swap them over to Optimism or Base, uh, if it allows you, you can do that. However, trading fees are usually quite high here. What I would recommend if you do want to bridge assets is actually just send the asset back to your centralized exchange, wait for it to settle, and then withdraw it on the other blockchain. That's usually cheaper than paying um, decentralized fees, but it's up to the individual. So what we need to do is get an asset that we can sell. I've got some ETH in my account and we're gonna buy some USDT. So the from asset is the one that you're selling. I'm gonna to go to Arbitrum. That's the chain I've got assets on. ETH right here, so I'll click that. Down here too, uh, gonna to stick on the Arbitrum chain and I want to search for USDT. So we can click this. So what we're doing here, we are selling ETH like this. Uh, that's an amount, it's gonna show me the exchange rate right here. So. This is using a decentralized exchange. What we can do down here on this click down here, uh, show the gas fees. Gas fees are very small because we're on Arbitrum. Slippage, we're not going to set that to 5%. We're going to select that to 1%, press save. Slippage is the, uh, the difference between the price quote you're given here and then the price that's actually traded when the uh, transaction goes through on the blockchain. For large assets like this, 1% and under. 5% uh, is way too much. Uh, maybe some meme coins would be 5%, but obviously we're not going to trade those. Uh, min amount received, you can see that here, 24.55, and the quote here, 24.82, right? So that's the slippage here. Now you can see this root at the bottom. This is telling me which exchange it is using. And you can see this changes over time. And so whichever decentralized exchange that is the best to use at that current time, it's going to root us through that, or at least hopefully. So that's the one we're using right now if we go ahead with this swap. So what we're going to do is actually swap this. So I'm going to go to swap here. You can see all of the transaction details. I'm going to press confirm. This is processing, looks to be approved actually, uh, and that succeeded. So I've swapped some ETH into USDT. There you go. And now I have some uh, USDT in my account. So it's as simple as that. Uh, pretty easy swap. But they also have what they call DEX Pro, which is actually the exact same thing under the hood as what we've just done. But the layout is much more like a centralized exchange. So we're going to go to trade and then DEX Pro. You can see it looks pretty much like any centralized exchange. Uh, within crypto, right? So we have the asset price chart here in a candlestick pattern, much more like a centralized exchange. You have the trades down here, which are trades that are going through on the blockchain. Uh, and then on the right hand side, you have the order options. Now, slightly different to a centralized exchange for right now anyway, much more simple. It's just buy and sell. Uh, there's no limit orders or anything for right now, although I'm sure that will come in the future. 
So what we need to be sure of is the blockchain that we're trading on. So again, we need to pay gas fees here. So we need some of the gas coin in our wallet at all times, but we're going to search on the Arbitrum not one network because that's where we have assets. You can see the popular coins on Arbitrum uh, that are trading right now. So let's just look at one of the coins, uh, for example, Link. And you can see the price chart here and then all of the trades that have gone through on the blockchain uh, down below. On the right hand side, because these are tokens on blockchains, you know, basically anything is allowed here, right? So it's gonna tell you if this is the right chain. I would double and tri uh, triple check that you have the right coin that you want to trade. Down below my head, you can't see it, but the contract address is right here. So what you can do is copy the contract address and actually go to a coin registry like CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap. You can paste in the address. You can make sure that the address is the same as the one that you're trading because there could be you know, link coins that are fake or whatever because it's a decentralized exchange, right? So just make sure that the uh, token that you're trading and the one you actually want to trade are the same token. And you can check that by the contract address. You can see the security of this asset. Uh, you know, it's open source, etc. So this is pretty much confirmed that this is the proper link coin that we're trading. And what we want to do is go ahead and trade it. So up in the top right, the quantity of link that we want to trade. So this is what we're buying, right? And what we're paying is the other asset. So I'm actually going to spend some USDT because we now have some of that in my wallet. You can see here, so I'm going to click that. So we want to spend an amount of USDT and it's going to tell me how much link. So again, this is the same thing, right? What we have to do is go ahead and uh, trade this on the blockchain. What you can see that's different here is that unlike the swap feature where it actually didn't ask me to approve the USDT, it just went ahead and swapped it. This is going to ask me to approve USDT. So if you want to go ahead and swap, what you have to do is approve the asset first. You can see that USDT is a token on top of the blockchain, right? And so what I need to do is give my wallet approval to actually go ahead and trade it. Because I haven't traded it before, it's going to ask me to approve. So what you need to do is go and approve. That's one transaction that you carry out. Once you've approved USDT in your wallet to trade, you can then go ahead and trade it uh, amongst anything else. So if you want to go ahead and do that, you can. If you just want to use ETH, right, you can do that here. And you can see it just says buy a link. So let's put an amount in like this and it works out the exchange rate and I can buy a link because I, I don't need to approve ETH. So this is looking like a centralized exchange. You can buy and sell assets here quite easily, but it is a decentralized exchange. And just be sure like if you are trading silly coins, you know, just make sure that they're not scams or anything like this. You can see these list of coins here. Just check that the coin you want to buy is the same as the one listed here. You can do that by the contract address. If you are connecting your Web3 wallet to lots of different applications, especially ones that aren't directly within the Web3 platform. So if you go to the magnifying glass here, this is a browser essentially, and you can just put in any URL of any dApp and go to it and then interact with it with your wallet. If you're doing that, it's good wallet hygiene just to check the approvals that you're giving these dApps. Because every time you trade or do something on a dApp, you're going to have to approve the token. And that approves the application to manipulate the balances within your wallet. So you can see all of these approvals that you've given and you can revoke them as well. So in the top left, click this icon, go to contract approvals. This takes us to revoke.cash. This isn't Bybit, it's a standalone dApp. But if you paste in your wallet address, it's going to show you all of the approvals that you've given. And if you have any value at risk, connected to that token approval. From here, you can see all of the uh, dApps that you've interacted with, all of the smart contracts. And on the right hand side, so if you scroll right, you can see the actions and you can revoke, which means you revoke the permission to that app. So it can't do anything with your assets again until you approve it again. So if you want to revoke them, just press revoke. It is a blockchain transaction, but if you're using a layer two, it's going to be super cheap. Revoke the permission, and then that app cannot do anything with any of the assets in your wallet until you give it permission again. If you want to trade in the futures market and trade with leverage, which a lot of day traders do, we can also do this within Bybit Web3. So you can see here that Bybit Web3, the platform is a lot like the Bybit centralized exchange. You have trade options and you have uh, leverage and derivatives options as well. Trade and then Apex, which is derivatives. And this is just the option to trade essentially just like on the Bybit centralized exchange. So what we do here is we're going to connect our cloud wallet and we actually create an account linked to our wallet. But there's no KYC here for now because this is a decentralized wallet. They may ask for KYC in the future uh, through account bound tokens or something like that. But for right now, I'm just going to press recover keys. I've already set up this wallet. If you haven't already, it's going to say set up an account, which is just linking your wallet to the decentralized exchange. So Apex is a decentralized exchange. It's a standalone exchange. It's kind of a brand or, or you know, a project outside of Bybit. But obviously Bybit have invested in it. So it's essentially the decentralized Bybit. 
Um, and what you can do is just use it within Bybit Web3. You can use it as a standalone DApp as well if you go to apex.exchange, I think it is. So I'm gonna press recover keys because I've already set up my wallet. I'm going to press send requests. And then from here, I just have to sign in. So that will uh, go ahead and do that. And I've, I've signed in, that's it. So from here, this is not trading like we did in the spot market with Swap and Dex Pro. What we do here is send assets into the exchange and then trade. And then whatever the balance is after we've made either a profit or a loss, we can then take that back out into our wallet. So what I'm gonna do here is actually go and deposit some uh, assets. So I've got some USDT. So I'm gonna press deposit here. And I should have some USDT in my wallet, right? So I'm gonna press USDT. I'm gonna press the network, which is Arbitrum. So I'm gonna click that. It's suspended for right now, right? But you can see the, uh, the options here. So what we're doing, we're not actually trading on Arbitrum. What we're doing is using the Arbitrum blockchain to send in some USDT over to the exchange. So I'm gonna send in USDT on Arbitrum and we're gonna send that in. Again, I have to enable USDT because I haven't enabled it yet. Enable it, once that's enabled, you can send it into the exchange. Once you've got the assets there in the ex exchange, you can go ahead and trade derivatives and futures and use leverage, just like on the Bybit uh, derivatives platform on the centralized exchange. So this is a standalone app, but you can use it within Bybit Web3. Uh, now, if you want to know exactly how to trade on here, it's a much too much for this video. I'll leave a link below to the Apex guide, which tells you how to get set up on here, trade on here, use leverage, etc. They also give a 5% fee discount. I'll link them below. If you use that and connect your wallet via that link, you can get 5% lifetime fee discount on Apex Exchange as well.